took faith. Every little single thing in the Bible took faith. Because without faith, there would have been no action. And, and there's so many more examples, but it all took faith to be put into action. And I, one really key thing that stuck to me out of this convention, because it wasn't a feel-good convention. It wasn't one of those conventions where you just go and, and you're, you're being like, man, like broken and all that. It was, it was more for me, at least. It was a convention where it was marching orders. It was a convention where it's like, you know what you need to do, start doing it, and rise up and take this generation for God. There, there's, there's, you guys wasted too many years playing all these games or too many years not trying to rise up. But to this year, from now forward, is the time. And Pastor Izzy said, desire alone won't let us reach the call of God. And that, that really, like, desire alone won't let us reach the call of God. And he said, desire without action is dead. If we don't put our faith into action, then it's just, it's just there. It's like untapped potential. Are we, are we going to tap into our potential or are we just going to let it die out? And if, if we only lean on desire, and uh, nothing will happen. It's when you put your faith into it that things begin to change. The way you live your life says a lot about, how, about the faith that you have. I remember when I used to come to this church when I was about eight or nine, and I, I used to ride my bike, and I'm, I'm Pastor Chris could tell you the story. I used to ride my bike, and I used to leave it on the side of the church, and, man, I used to come day in and day out, every service, never miss a service, and I, I just kept every service. I would come believing for my mom, believing for her to get saved, believing for my family to be healed, and, man, I would come every time, I would, I would, and then I would come home, and my mom would be right there, like, uh, coming down or she'd be she'd be high at the house or she'd be drunk and I'd be just praying in my room and coming back to church the next time signing myself up for for kids gang and man it was like it was through a kids gang play that that I stepped into faith that I stepped into my faith and I took that action and I went into that play and I played and my mom came and she came to these altars at a kids gang play and she gave her life to God. And, man, if it, if it wouldn't have took that faith, if I wouldn't have put my faith into action, then where would I have been today? Where would my family be today if, if we wouldn't have put that untapped potential, that untapped faith into action? And, and, man, if you guys get out of anything out of the services, I want you guys to know that it's not about how big your situation is. It's not about how big the problem is. It's not about how big the things that are trying to come against you in this time. It's about how big your faith is. And if you guys could just close your eyes and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you, God, for this opportunity, God. And I pray, God, that you spoke through me, God, and that you're able, God, to God, reach someone tonight. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. Let's give him a hand here tonight. How many of you know there's a third wave of preachers on the rise? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stay standing with me tonight. And, you know, this evening, you've seen a little bit of what's taking place in the last week. And there's so many others that we could have put up here that God really spoke to them. God challenged them. God did something within their lives. And, you know, I believe that, that what's about to take place in this generation, what's about to take place in the gang in the city of San Diego is about, it's going to be something that's never been done here before. We're believing God not to just you know, raise up a, a, a pizza party ministry. We're believing God not to raise up young people that just look good or that talk good, but we're believing to raise up a generation of young people that know what it is to answer the call of God, a group of young people that know what it is to have a genuine relationship with the Lord, a group of young people that know what it is to sacrifice and lay down their life for the call of God upon them. And this evening, I have the privilege and the opportunity to, to speak here in I just want to thank the Lord for my salvation. This past Saturday, I celebrated 15 years of serving God. Amen. And I know I don't look that old. Amen. But it was at the age of 15 years old, we're right here at this altar at a gang night, where I, where I felt the call of God saying, I've called you to be different. I've called you to separate yourself. I've called you to take a stand for your generation. It's been 15 years that I've been serving God, and it's not been easy. Amen. It's been challenging, but how many know that it's been worth it, amen? I also want to thank, you know, Pastor Alton Georgina for the privilege to, to lead, I believe, the greatest youth ministry there is in Victory Outreach, amen? And to be a part of such an amazing church, amen? I also want to thank the ministers and, and the staff for this privilege. And lastly, before I get into it, I want to thank my wife, amen? She's here somewhere, amen? And she's down for whatever 
Amen. I, I know that God's had us on a journey since we got married, and never once has she questioned, are you sure? Never once has she said, I, I don't know, I like my stuff, I like my things. But in a drop of a dime, she's always said yes, amen. And so, Christina, wherever, wherever you're at, I love you, amen. But tonight I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. book of Isaiah chapter 45, 45 beginning in verse 2 and we should all know this amen it says I will go before you and level the mountains I will ba- I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron I will give you hidden treasure hidden treasures riches stored in secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord the God of Israel who summons you by name let's pray Lord I come before you this evening God and Lord I just thank you God for this privilege and this opportunity to minister your word Lord, I ask, God, that every heart would be open, every ear would be attentive, God, and that, God, you would speak to us tonight, you would challenge us here tonight, Lord, and I ask that you would just take full and complete control. We love you, we thank you, in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen, you can go ahead and be seated tonight. Well, like I said, how many know this is a very familiar scripture, amen, and we heard it on Sunday when our pastor preached, and, you know, Victory Outreach, we've been given a purpose, amen. We've been given a purpose over 50 years ago. Our ministry was founded on the vision of reaching the drug addict, the gang member, the prostitute, amen. We were, we were birthed on reaching the lost at any cost, going to the highways and the, and the byways, going to the places where no one else wanted to go, reaching the people that no one else wanted to reach. And as Victory Outreach, we've been able to see the power of God continue to change lives today. We continue to see the vision of Victory Outreach continue to be lived out, continue to change people's lives. And as Victory Outreach, we've been mandated to reach the lost. We've been mandated to reach men and women that are hurting, that are bound, that that are looking for an answer, that are looking for hope. But I want you to know that there's a second part to that promise. There's a second part to that promise that includes not just you, but it includes those that were to come after you. And in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 and 3, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. You see, the vision of Victory Outreach wasn't to just reach you. It wasn't to just reach those around you. It wasn't just to reach your homeboy and your homegirl. But the vision of Victory Outreach was also meant to reach those that were to come after you, to reach your children, to reach your grandchildren, to reach those that were going to follow in your footsteps. It was to reach the descendants that were still to come. You see, it was about teaching the now generation that they had a place in this ministry. That they didn't have to be a drug addict. They didn't have to be a gang member. They didn't have to be on the streets in order to find a place in Victory Outreach. And I thank God because over 30 years ago about, someone went into a county jail and and reached my dad. My uncle was going to Victory Outreach and he reached my mom. And I thank God because they, they reached my parents and never have I had to put a joint to my mouth. Never have I had to put a bottle to my lips. Never have I had to do anything that that doesn't glorify God, but because someone knew that the vision of Victory Outreach wasn't to just reach the drug addict and the gang member, but that there was others to come, I'm able to be here today. And I thank God because I'm a descendant of this ministry. I'm a descendant of a man and a woman of God that have been willing to lay down their lives so that others can be saved. You see, there's a whole generation There's a whole generation that's about to bring a revival, and we've been hearing about this third wave, and yes, we've we've heard that it's not just a a, a age thing, but it's a spirit thing, and there's a generation of young people that are going to lead this third wave, a generation of young people that have been called, that have been selected, that God has chosen to take a big part in this ministry, but in order for them to do that, it's going to take you and I to join them. In Isaiah 59, 21, this is the newest promise that we've received as a ministry. It says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit is on you. You will not, de- you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants. From this time on and forever, says the Lord. You know, and tonight you and I, we have a responsibility We have a responsibility to reach those that are to come after us. We have a responsibility to continue to develop and train and equip the young people that are to follow us. 
We have been appointed by God to prepare those for the future. And the great thing about this generation is they have the giftings. They have the talents. Tonight you see the young people up here leading worship. You see Joey preaching the word of God. You see our young people dancing and being platformed. They have everything they need to be the most powerful generation yet. Because how many of you know that it's in the house? But gifts, talents, and abilities aren't going to cut it. Gifts, talents, and abilities aren't going to keep them 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. But I believe that what's going to keep them is what kept the first and second generation. It's going to be the loyalty, the values, the commitment, the dedication. And all those things are in the house. All those things are in the house. You see, we need men and women that are going to be willing to continue to lead the way for us. Those that are going to continue to set a path that young people can follow after. And though you may be here and you say, well, that's the gang leader's job now. That's the youth pastor's job. That's the gang girl's leader's job. I want you to know something, church, tonight. That as the gang leader of Victory Outreach San Diego, I can't do what God's called me to do without you. I can't reach a generation of young people without men and women that believe in what we're doing. I can't do what God called us to do without men and women that are willing to say, hey, I'll give you some of my time. I'll invest into you. I'll mentor you. I'll challenge you. When I see you getting prideful, when I see you getting big-headed, I'll call you out on it. You see, we can't do what God's called us to do without those that have gone before us. And tonight, that's what I want to talk to you about. Because I believe that in order for this generation, in order for God's anointed now generation to be who God's called them to be, in order for them to be effective, in order for them to be the wave that God's called them to be, we need some men and women that will set the pace for us, that won't just back down because they say, I've been there, done that, but those that will say, hey, I'm a part of this third wave. I don't care how old I am. I don't care what I've done, where I've been, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to continue to see the vision of Victory Outreach continued. And so in order for the gang to fulfill the call that God's placed upon their lives, we need examples of loyalty. Men and women that will show us what it is to be loyal. What it is to be loyal. The word loyal means giving or showing firm and and constant support or alliances to a person or institution. And in Proverbs 21, 21, it says, He who pursues righteousness and loyalty finds life, righteousness and honor. You see, we're looking for some men and women that will show us what it is to be loyal. That when it gets tough, that they don't, they don't shift to the left and to the right. And the thing with this generation is that when it no longer benefits them, when it no longer is pleasing to them, when they no longer get anything out of it, their focus easily, easily shifts. Or when they get offended, they easily want to sway to the left and to the right. But I believe that there's some men and women in the house that have been here for 10 years plus, 20 years plus, 30 years plus, that can show this now generation what it is to be loyal to God, what it is to be loyal to the ministry of Victory Outreach. You see, we need men and women that that can show us what it is to stand firm, what it is to be planted, what it is to be rooted. Too many times nowadays we see young people that that come into the house of God and and they get a little bit of position, they get a little bit of placement, but the moment their feathers are ruffled, the moment that they're told something they don't like, they want to up and leave. They want to say, well, I don't believe in that vision anymore. I'm not on board or because I can't do this or I can't have it my way. They want to get distracted and begin to have their own vision and their own mindset. But in order for us to be the generation God's called us to be, we need some men and women that will teach us to be loyal those that will stand beside us, those that are diehards for the vision of Victory Outreach, those that will say, I'm willing to give my blood, sweat, and tears another 50 years. We need men and women that are willing to continue to lay down their lives so that we can follow after it. Because though, though you may be able to speak eloquently, though you may look the best, though you may have it all together, I want you to know something, church, that young people don't follow what you say, they follow what you do. And we need some men and women that will continue to lead the way and show us what it is to be loyal. Those of you that were diehards in your neighborhood, you were a diehard for the gang. You were a diehard for your drug. You were a diehard for your addiction is what we need to see take place in the house of God so that our young people can be diehards for God. We need loyal, we need loyal men and women that we can follow after that say, I'm in, I'm in it till the hubcaps fall off, right? You used to say that in the neighborhood. You used to say that with the homies. I got your back. I'm all in. We need men and women that will show us what it is to be all in. 
Not only do we need men and women that are examples of loyalty, but we need men and women that are examples of commitment. And to be committed means filling dedication to a cause, activity, or job, wholeheartedly de dedicated. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. You see, we need men and women that are willing to give it their all even when things get tough. Men and women that, that will show us what it is to be committed when life gets a little heavy, when things aren't going our way, when situations happen, when sickness happens in our family, when, you know, our money's acting funny, when things get hard, when maybe we're, on, maybe we're not in our prime season, maybe we're on the shelf. We need men and women that will show us what it is to be committed, what it is to be committed to God, what it is to be committed to the vision of Victory Arch, what it is to be committed to our pastors and to our church. Those that don't say one thing and do the opposite. And many times we can find ourselves looking at certain people and we look, we can, young people look at, at those that, that look like they have an exciting life, those that look like they have it together, but then we, we end up seeing that they don't make it in the long run, that they don't make it, that they don't make it past that hardship, they don't make it past the difficulty. But I believe that there's some men and women in Victory Outreach San Diego that have been through some things that have been tested, that have been challenged, that have been put through some stuff, that have gone through some battles, that have showed their commitment to God, that have showed commitment to the call that he's placed upon their lives. You see, commitment is one of the number one issues that our generation faces. Do you know that the reason why marriages don't work nowadays is because young people don't like commitment? Jobs don't last because young people don't like commitment. Friendships don't last because young people don't like commitment. Because the moment they get what they want and nothing is no longer satisfying them, nothing is no longer pleasing to them, they move on to the next thing. And they get what they want from that and then they move on to the next thing. And so on and so forth. But I believe that in order for us to be the generation God's called us to be, we need some men and women that will challenge us, that will correct us, that will push us to be committed in the good, the bad, and the ugly. We need some men and women that will show this generation how to be committed to God. How to be committed to God even when it hurts. How to be committed to God when you think you can't. How to be committed to God even when you feel like you have nothing else to give. We need men and women that will show us what it is to stay committed and connected to God. Not only do we need men and women that will show us what it is to be committed, but we need men and women that will show us what it is to be passionate. And passion means strong and barely controllable emotion. You see, we need passionate people that are willing to do whatever it takes to see the call of God fulfilled upon their lives. And in Colossians 3.23, it says, whatever you do, work, heart, work heartedly as a Lord and not for men. You see, we need some men and women that will show us what it is to be passionate for lost souls, for hurting people. Those that, it's, that it still breaks them when they walk by a homeless man or a homeless woman. Not those that say, oh, well, they made that decision. But men and women that break for those that are still out there, those that are hurting, those that are lost, those that remember where God took them out of, those that remember what God did for their lives. You see, because today's generation is what we call a selfish generation. And they're worried about themselves. They're worried about what they do and what they don't have. They think that because they don't have the newest pair of kicks that they're going without. They think because they don't have a fresh haircut every two weeks, it's an issue. But there's men and women that are dying, that are hurting, that are lost on the streets. And we need some examples of what it is to be passionate about souls still. We need examples of boldness and willingness to do whatever it takes to see the city of San Diego one for God. And I believe right now we have some men and women that are passionate in this place. We have some men and women that are passionate enough to give their finances, to give their time, to give their energy, to see this building expanded, to see this vision continue. But we need men and women that will say, hey, you know what, young person, let me take you along the journey with me. Let me bring you along and let me show you what it is to continue to fight. Let me show you what it is to see the need. Let me show you what it is to have a conviction to give your best. You know, one thing that I love is that tonight Joey came up here, came, he came up here, and he didn't just thank me, he didn't just thank pastors, but he thanked Pastor Chris. 
And Pastor Chris is a man who showed Joey how to be passionate about the vision of Victory Outreach. He's invested his time. When Joey was messed up and he was slinging drugs and he was getting high and he was ditching school, Pastor Chris didn't say, well, that's just a young person, but he brought him into his home. He woke up with him every morning. He taught him what it was to read the word. He taught him what it was to be passionate about God, passionate about reaching people. And we need men and women that are willing to get uncomfortable, men and women that are willing to open up their doors and say, hey, it's my family day, but I want to bring you along. I want to show you what it is to be about serving God, how, how serving God is an exciting thing. Because one thing you don't realize is that some of these young people don't have parents that don't come to church. Some of these young people come alone. We need, young, we need men and women that will show our young people what it is to be passionate. We had a young lady go with us to gang convention and God made it happen for her. And we said, look, if we help you get there, can you work, about, work on getting money to eat for the week? Just That's all you got to worry about. Just get food. And she was so hungry to be there. She was in awe that God was willing to provide. She said, I just won't eat for the week. Because she, she wanted more of God. She wanted to grab a hold of God. She wanted to encounter him. And this young girl, she comes to church by herself. She don't got a mom. She don't got a dad. She lives with grandma. And she comes and she's looking for an answer. She's looking for hope. She's looking for a place where she could find it as, as a home. She could find a refuge. But we need men and women that will show her what it is to love God wholeheartedly, what it is to be passionate about serving him, what it is to be passionate about reaching other men and women that are lost. The type of passion that we first had when we got saved. The passion that when you got saved, you couldn't help but tell people about Jesus. You couldn't help but go by a drug addict. You couldn't help but go by an alcoholic and tell them about the love of God. We need men and women that still carry that passion, that still carry that zeal, that still carry that excitement to see souls saved. The passion that doesn't allow us to go past unsafe people without telling them about Jesus. You know, and one thing I love is that our founders, no matter how old they get, no matter how much they do, they never lose the passion. Same thing with our pastors. They work hard day in, day out, week in, week out, but they never lose the passion. You never see our pastor come up here and, and give you a half-hearted message, no matter how tired he is, no matter how sick he is. You never see our pastor's wife come around and, and give you half of her ear when you want to talk to her, but they give their best. And I believe that this next generation needs to carry that quality to give their best, to be passionate about souls, to be passionate about people. But it's going to take for us to have examples of what it is to be passionate for God. So we need examples of loyalty, commitment, passion, and fourthly, we need examples of conviction. We need examples of conviction, not compromise. Conviction to say, God, if I'm going to serve you, I'm going to serve you the right way. God, if I'm going to give you my best, I'm going to give you my best all the way. God, if I'm going to if I'm going to lay my life down, my life down for you, I'm not going to shortcut it. And in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we discuss our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, we need those that are willing to show us what it is to have conviction. Those that are willing to show us what it is to have a standard and to not cross that line. Those that say, hey, this is how you live a godly life. This is how you live a life pleasing to the Lord. This is how you give God your best. This is how you set the standard. This is how you make it 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Men and women that will set a standard. Men and women that will show us what it is to not compromise, what it is to not dabble. Men and women that will call us out when they see it. Men and women that aren't afraid to offend the now generation, but men and women that are willing to poke at us, to challenge us, to make us feel a little convicted. Because I want you to know something, church. Our young people aren't going to just up and leave because you told them something. They're not going to just up and leave because you challenge them to have a conviction. You challenge them to have integrity. You challenge them to be men and women of God. You see, we need men and women that will show us what it is to have a pure conviction for the Lord. And not just any type of conviction, but an instant conviction. 
That the moment they get that thought to go back to the homie's house, the moment they get that thought to start missing church for a job, the moment they get that thought to start shortcutting their personal relationship with God, that they would have an instant conviction that they would say, man, God, I know this is not your perfect will. I know this is not what you desire for me. I know this is not what you have set up for me. But men and women that will, ha- that will show us what it is to have that instant conviction. And like I said in the beginning, what you said as an example is what the next generation will become. It's what they will become. It's what they will develop. The good habits you show them is what they will develop. The bad habits you show them is what they will develop. We need men and women that are willing to lock arms with us. Men and women that are willing to say, hey, my kids are grown. Hey, they're out of the house. Hey, I, I'm still I'm still moving. I'm still doing things for God. I'm willing to back you up. I'm willing to lock arms with you. I'm willing to, to get with you. I'm willing to connect with you. You know, one thing I love about Pastor Louie is that I feel him in my corner. I feel him in my corner every time I see him. I feel him in, in my corner fighting for me, backing me. You know, and this year we've seen a lot of shift happen. We've seen a lot of things change and the outreach internationally and in the gang. Even locally, we've seen a shift take place. Regionally, we've seen a shift take place. And unfamiliar territory can be scary. And not just for me, but for our young people, it can be scary. It can be intimidating. It could be, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if what they've said about me in the past is true or not. I don't know if I can stand the test of time. But when you got men like Pastor Louie that fight for you, when you got men that have been in this for 30 plus years backing you up, telling you, hey, you got this. I'm with you. If you need something, call me. If you don't understand, let me know. If you need ideas, let me know. It makes you feel a sense of, a, a, a sense of security. It gives you a sense of security like, okay, I can do this. Okay, I, I'm doing something right. Okay, I'm, I, I'm moving the right way. Okay, I'm, I, I'm seeing it. But we need men and women that will fight with us, men and women that will back us up, men and women that will get in our corner that will say, hey, this third wave is not just an age thing, but it's a spirit thing. And I'm all in. I got your back. I'm all in. I'm willing to fight with you. Hey, you got some young people that are wayward. I'm willing to have a prayer meeting for you. Hey, I'm willing to get some parents together and begin to tap in for you. You have gang night on Friday night. Hey, I'm going to get some mom and dad together at 5 in the morning to grab a hold of God that you guys would have breakthrough. Because like I said, the gang leaders, we can't do our jobs without you. We can't do what God's called you to, called us to do without you. We believe God's called Victory Outreach San Diego to be one of the leading youth ministries, and not just the, the ministry, but in the world. We believe that Victory Outreach San Diego, God's anointed now generation, is going to do things that, have, or that are unheard of, that have never been done, that have never even been spoken about or thought about. But it's only going to happen when men and women are willing to back us up. When men and women are willing to, to continue to fight with us, continue to lead the way with us, continue to challenge us. And yes, we may be the face of the third wave. It may be our time to fight. It may be our time to put in the work. It may be our time to be the face. But we still need the anointing. We still need the fight. We still need the commitment, the dedication, the spirit that the first and the second wave had. We need those that will lock arms with us. Because we're not looking for more good preachers to preach at gang night. We're not looking for more good worship leaders to lead us into worship. We're not looking for good people with icebreakers or crazy ideas. But we're looking for men and women that will challenge us to be real men and women of God. Those that will make it 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Those that will say, hey, I'm going to invest into you. I'm going to give you my best. I'm going to give you everything that's inside of me so that I can see you be great for him. We need you to be a part of this third wave. We need you to be a part of what God's doing. I'm going to ask them to come to the keys tonight. In order for us to be the most powerful generation yet, we need more than just those that are good on a mic, those that have charisma, those that can speak well, those that can sing well. I'm sure you've seen it. You've seen we have the gifts, we have the talents, we have the abilities, we have the smarts but we need the spirit. We need the spirit of the first and second generation. 
We need the spirit of the men and women that have gone before us. We need the spirit of those that, that will push us, that will challenge us. That like I said, when, when young people start getting a little big-headed or they start acting a little funny or getting a little cocky or, or they start getting a little entitled like they deserve this pulpit, they deserve this stage, that there would be men and women that would call them out on it, not to say, hey, you're doing that wrong, but hey, your mindset should be different. Let me teach you. Let me show you. Let me show you what it is to have a pure heart. Let me show you what it is to have pure motives. Let me show you what it is to have a conviction. Let me show you what it is to have integrity. And you read in the Bible, and, and anyone, that, anyone that has ever done something great, anyone that has, that has come after someone great has had someone lead them. You look at Jesus and the disciples. The disciples had Jesus to look up to. You look at Esther and Mordecai. Esther had Mordecai to teach her. You look at Elisha and Elijah, and, and he had him to, to lead him. And tonight, my question to you, church, is do we have you? Do we have you to look to? And I'm not just talking to the first two rows, but I'm talking to the, from the front to the back. Can this third wave, can this now generation depend on you? to continue to back us up, to continue to fight for us, to continue to challenge us, to continue to equip us, to continue to model to us. Because I want you to know that we can't do it alone, but we can do it with you because everything we need, like I said, is in the house. Everything we need to be effective for God is in the house. And tonight I'm going to ask you to stand with me. And my desire tonight and my prayer has been that tonight's message would not be a message that would make anyone feel less than or, or not like they're not doing something. But my desire has been all week and my prayer has been that there would be men and women that would feel a sense of responsibility to continue to lead this next generation. Men and women that would feel a sense of conviction, a sense of anguish for the young people that are still to come. And tonight I want to do something special because I don't believe about just talking about it, but I believe about doing it because that's what I've been taught. And so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask if all the young people can just join me here at the altar. Gang leaders, if you can help me just bring them all up real quickly. Let's move, guys. said we can't do it without you. And as a young person, I've had mentors, I've had leaders, I've had friends that have gotten me to where I am today. And I haven't arrived, I'm not perfect, I don't got it all together. But I've had those that have believed in me. I've had those that have invested into me. I've had men that have gone out of their way to check on me. And tonight, what I'm asking, as your gang leader, is that you would do what those men have done for me. That you would commit as a church to invest into this now generation. That you wouldn't just walk by them and say, oh, it's another young person. 
Oh, the gang leader will do that. Miller will do that. Johnny will do that. Stephanie will do that. But that as the men and women of this church, that you would feel the responsibility and the conviction to fight for this generation. And tonight, what I'm going to do is is we're going to sing a song. And if you say, Miller, I got your back. I'm willing to fight with you. I'm willing to invest. But I don't want it just for this quick moment. I don't want it for like a week. I need men and women that will say, I'm going to invest into them until they get to where God's called them. I'm going to be a model to them until they get to where God's called them.